Thank you very much. Um, just a few um, sort of points or distillations from the last two days. I think one thing that really struck is that in country after country, the world of work has changed dramatically and not overnight, over a period of time. And those of us in the health sector, it's a wake up call for us because we have to reorient our lenses, our strategies, our services to fit the world of work um, where the mass of the working poor of the globe, um, well, lives and struggles every day. So I think that's something we learned across the board on every single continent. The second thing was that many countries, and these are not typically the rich countries or the countries of the North, have done substantial work on universal health coverage and occupational health and safety. And there's much to learn from them. It's not necessarily high tech or very resource intensive, but they have put their money uh, into this. They have understood, and I think that there's something to learn from that, that it doesn't always have to be um, you know, huge investments, but that they do make a huge difference to working people on the globe. The third thing I think that came out, and I hope it's okay to suggest that there should be one more P in the PPP. We have PPP, and maybe one more P would be people's organizations. Because, um, you know, ultimately what all of us are trying to do and change is, is to work towards people's well-being on the globe, no matter which country they come from, no matter which socioeconomic strata. The other thing that I think came out and was very interesting, especially for our colleagues who work with industry, is the willingness to engage in going, going beyond covering their own employees. Um, employees outside the factory gate, so to speak, but also beyond that, you know, contributing to the well-being of, of countries across national borders, which I think is a very welcome step. Uh, use of technology already, Bob has mentioned, in addition to the mobile phone, I think use of things like what we are experimenting with tablets, handheld tablets by frontline workers, um, something that's crying out for some more resources, some more scaling up, and it's simple and, and workable. A few ideas from here of how we can continue to engage. I think one that came strongly was working with employers and corporations across national boundaries corporations like GAP on the supply chain issue, and there are corporations which are ahead. So let's highlight those, let's bring them out and jumpstart others to also do that, keeping all three things in mind, productivity, increase in income, and of course safeguarding health. We've already talked about IT, so I won't dwell on that. I think one thing that's important, and I think Ivan brought this up, Ivan brought this up, is the whole, and, and, um, up as well, the importance of what we call body literacy or health education, just simple information um, that could be supported by employers and others, or it could be taken up by the workers themselves. It's not an expensive exercise, but it's a labor intensive exercise. There are costs. You have to go and sit with workers when it suits them, after working hours, on their holidays, etc. Then I think, which is our personal favorite in Seva and Vigo, I think, is support for low cost or no cost, as Yuka calls it, uh, tools and processes. And there is a lot we can do, and there is a lot of expertise in this room and outside. And I think this is an area of partnership. And it's the $2, the $5, the $8, which makes such a huge difference to uh, persons like my sister Fatima Ben, the kite worker. I think also another area that we could explore for partnerships is the primary health care clinics or mobile clinics or diagnostic camps. So if we can show a model for, you know, early detection and screening, then perhaps we can also bring it to our governments and others. Another idea is perhaps a separate workshop on occupational health and safety or occupational safety and health, whichever way we'd have it, because I think there's a lot of scope for more collaboration, collaborative research between those of us who work with informal workers, but we do need the metrics, the scientific validation, um, and the generation of data. There's a lot of holes there. 
I think you said, uh, Clarion, rightly, that it's not just about the money. And I would like to suggest that we also, wherever we are and with our professional colleagues, continue the work of challenging concepts. Um, you know, one concept that we've challenged successfully in the last two days is the world of work. But that affects the way we do business, the way we look at occupational health and safety. And there's much challenging to be done. Um, I also venture to just suggest, and I hope I'm not being impertinent in doing this, is that perhaps the experience of countries of the South on universal health care may have a few lessons for the countries of the North, particularly the United States, because the choices that you make, the decisions that you make, actually, on universal health care affect us all deeply, because our countries are deeply affected by what, well, the most powerful country on the earth chooses to do or not to do. So I hope that some of our experiences are of use to you, and particularly the low cost or no cost grassroots innovations, as you would call them, which are really not so fancy, but can be done and are workable. And I venture to think that they might be useful in rural Mississippi or even inner city areas of the United States. And finally, you asked how to accelerate. And what I would like to see, I hope it's possible, is using your convening power to convene similar such fora in regions or certainly in countries. Patrick mentioned that there is interest in our country to set up a similar institute of medicine. And it would be helpful if you shared your experience and, and helped us do that. Thank you. <laughs>